usually the case for the limited sportsmen. They'll run that long distance event. 20 laps coming up on May 20th. Well, Ryan Waterman won a championship in 2016 without winning a race. He is starting up front alongside Brent Gleason, who grabbed two wins last year. And we are ready to pump up the volume in the limited sportsman. Double greens are out from atop the flag stand, and we are underway. Contact already on the front row between Brent Gleason and Ryan Waterman. They are racing into turn one. Gleason away with the race lead, and it's four wide for the third spot deeper back. And the car spins Kyle Garrow, turn two, car number 19, as he gets out of control. Let's see if he can fire it back up before the traffic comes by. It is Brett Gleason out in front, Sadine sideways, turn four. It's got Sadine, gets pointed in the right direction. So like a whirlpool, he gets uh, pointed back in straight practice, but felt that the motor was missing a little bit. They did a little work on it, had it all taken apart, found that the distributor in that 01 car had failed, put a new one in, and boy, did that thing come to life. And all of a sudden, he became a contender overnight. You know, pretty good move by Scott Sundin as uh, he did a flying sit spin. And at number 36, it looked like he was in the Olympics figure skating and was able to get pointed in the right direction. And as you pointed out, because the caution was already out on the track before he spun, uh, what he did really didn't happen in the eyes of our scorers. All right, let's try it again. No laps complete of 20 in the limited sportsman division. Brent Gleason on the bottom, Ryan Waterman, the leader to the outside lead. And it's an even and clean start. This time, no contact among the top two. And they race for the race lead in turn one. Bottom is Gleason. Outside is Waterman and Gleason with the advantage. And here comes Scott Sundin, the 36. He is in a hurry as he tries to erupt underneath Ryan Waterman. It looks like he is going to succeed. And Scott Sundin is bypassed Waterman to move into second place. Zach Robinson right up on the back bumper of Ryan Waterman. Steve Kenaway behind and Al Stone third. Now trying to make waves on the inside lane of the racetrack. He goes underneath Zach Robinson, gets by him, now goes underneath Ryan Waterman and picks up two spots and turns one and two. So Stone able to firecracker his way into the top three and following his shirt tail is the 14 of Zach Robinson. A little contact to the back bumper of the 52 makes contact with Waterman. Waterman bounces off the wall. He is tangled up with Al Stone. And the yellow comes out as a helter-skelter activity on the front straightaway. It all started with Robinson and Stone. Then Stone veered across the track and ran into Waterman. Waterman bounced off the wall like a cue ball and went back into the path of Stone. And Al Stone trying to get that car moving in a straight direction again. We'll be giving the winner $250. Northeast Race Cars and Parts is involved. The winner will get a $25 product certificate. And also, a $25 product certificate will go to the winner of a random draw. And in the raceway, restaurant, pizza, and beer to the winner. We're going to wave the restart off. Everybody will stay here out on track. One more time before we're ready to go racing again. Al Stone has made his way back out onto the racetrack. Uh, no sign of Ryan Waterman as of yet. So Stone will return. We'll get a good look at the repairs that they made to that number 52. Looks like uh, pulled the sheet metal back, got a new tire, but it doesn't look like that tire is as straight as it was. Might be cantilevered in just a little bit on that 52. What car. is it? I have no Can idea. Cantilevered? Yeah, I don't even know if that's a word. It is now. I just made it up. Okay. I think it is. One lap we, wanted, we wanted to start the race on the last race, but we can't deliver because the caution came back out, but now we are ready to go. All right, here we go. The Camaro pace car is in field, doubled up as they come off turn number four to the green flag. Brent Gleason on the bottom, quick with that right foot again. He gets ahead of Scott Sundin, who's got a deal with the youngster, Zach Robinson, to his left elbow. And Robinson trying to take second away from him, and he darts his way into second place. Chris Meyer is in fourth, and the Velvet Hammer, Sean Monahan, trying to make a bold move, trying to jackrabbit his way underneath Meyer. He's the defending champion and limited, limited sportsman here at Thompson Speedway, just drove into the fourth spot in that critical signs. 
white and orange number 55 closes in on the back bumper. Four-time champ, Scott Sundin. Boy, it's hard to believe that that 26 car in Kenaway had some damage because he is on the verge of moving into the top five as he is able to choo-choo train his way underneath Chris Meyer. So Kenaway is in the top five. Larry Barnett trying to overhaul the 87 of Meyer. Let's see if he can do it as a romp into turn two. Barnett in that yellow and red number 73 closing in on Meyer. Battle is on for second now, just ahead of that. Scott Sundin in the 36 machine pulls to the inside of Zach Robinson. Behind him, Sean Monahan deciding who he wants to follow, and he's going to follow nobody as he goes all the way down to the inside. Contact between Robinson and Sundin, and Sundin is going to lose two spots in the exchange. But it was almost like Robinson stepped on a bar of soap in the shower as he slid all the way up near the concrete, was able to recover, but here comes Sean Monahan. He has momentum, he has adrenaline, and he will have second place coming out of the fourth quarter. Neck and neck, two by two, two rows back in the battle for second, in the battle for the fourth spot directly behind them. It's Monahan battling with Robinson. He gets the job done. Robinson nearly getting back into him off the turn. Behind them is Sundin. Goes to the inside, but the caution flag is out. The one car of Scott Cook has gone around at the entrance of Pit Lane, bringing out the caution flag here for the third time. Five laps in to our 20 lap. The late models will come out following them. It'll be group qualifying for the NASCAR Wheelin Modified Tour. Think we have a shot at the track record today? Well, it's going to be interesting. Bobby Santos laid down the track record in 2011 on Icebreaker Weekend. And if we look back at the times that we ran here yesterday afternoon, uh, Ronnie Williams in final practice was down in the 18 fives. And Bobby Santos in 2011 set a time of 18.237 as the track record, Matt. So the temperature and the conditions are different today than they were yesterday. We'll have to see whether or not somebody could lay down a fast lap in group qualifying and take that track record away. Trying to lay down a fast lap right now. Brent Gleason getting the jump on Sean Monaghan, but Monaghan recovers, and Monaghan is able to pogo stick oh, his way to the lead. Phil Jakes, hard hit in turn one and two. His car went from the bottom lane of the racetrack to the top lane and went straight in. Nose first in that best appearing at number 43. Five or six cars also involved. Kevin Bowe, one of them. The Waterman, number seven. We Megan Fuller one. was in it. So that is how special that first ever win would be for Tommy Shea. He would give his car away to the best golfer. I don't know. I want to see that. Pretty good competition. I don't know. I think he might keep it. A new look for that double zero. The driver is is uh, Nick Anderson, and the man who put that car together, Joe Plonsky. And Broadway Joe, we saw him uh, partake of the pit party, and he has a nice-looking car, that double zero, driven by Nick Anderson. All right, cleanup continued, or as concluded, I should say, in turns one and two. The pace car is heading in, and we're ready to get back underway in our limited sportsman event. Brent Gleason is led from the drop of the green flag, Sean Monahan trying to challenge, though. Outside lane. Here we go. Back underway into turn one. And it looks like Monahan has the upper hand as he is able to rabble rouse his way into the lead against uh, Brett Gleason. And here is a fight between Zach Robinson on the inside and the outside persistence of Scott Sundin. Sundin backpedaling, though, falls into the clutches of Steve Kenaway, who roars to the inside lane of the racetrack. He brings Jesse Gleason, the brother of the second place machine, Brent Gleason, right along with him. Now they battle wheel to wheel for the fourth spot to the inside lane. Advantage goes Jesse Gleason, Sundin back a spot. Kevin Mason doing a good job. He has a seventh place car trying to get into the top ten. Is Mike Palin in the 0-2 as he tries to tucker out that 47 car uh, driven by Corey Fanning. But the spotlight, as it has often in the last couple of years at Thompson, belongs to Sean Monahan. Monahan out in front. Got it. Pick up right where he left off in the 2017 season as the track champion. His first championship in limited sportsman competition here at Thompson. Battle is on for third. Steve Kenaway working the inside lane underneath Zach Robinson. 
And the whirling dervish, the 26 of Steve Kennaway, tries to puncture his way underneath Robinson. Robinson goes up high into the Raisinets, and that gives third place to Kennaway. Jesse Gleason follows on through to the inside lane, trying to get fourth. Scott Sundin will put his bumper down to the inside of Robinson, who finally has it all gathered back. The two come together ever so slightly. Robinson goes up the racetrack, and Sundin gives him room to gather it back in. It's been a magical mystery tour for the last lap and a half for Robinson. He goes high again. That gives an opening for Scott Sundin, but exiting turn two is the strength of Zach Robinson as he maintains his fifth place perch. Corey Fanning is off the pace in the back straight away. He'll bring his car down pit lane as continuing to battle for the fourth spot. Scott Sundin on the bottom. Zach Robinson up high into turn number one. It's the battle for fifth. Sundin puts it out in front and gets the spot away. As Robinson having a difficult time keeping his car off the balcony. What about Jess Gleason? Started in 14th, and right now he's trying to move into the podium against Steve Kennaway. Almost was able to stick his nostrils. And now we have a yellow because of a problem with the two-car. Events forward. like this happen, so we do appreciate the support offered from any time. And uh, 250 bucks goes a long way as a contingency sponsor when it comes to uh, getting tires, fuel, parts, whatever it may be, just to keep these cars running on the racetrack. Well, we know Keith Rocco is happy because he collected $250 by virtue of his victory in the Sudoku Modifieds. Who will get the next 250 payout? Remember, on the last restart, it belonged to Sean Monahan. Electing to go to the outside, and we'll see if Brent Gleason can do something about it. Pace car dives in, field doubled up, and ready to go one more time. Halfway, 10 laps to go as the green flag is displayed. Once again, a top flag stand by Sean Monahan, and Sean Monahan is off and running. Sean the showman getting the advantage. Look at Jesse gliding by his brother Brent. So Jesse Gleason is in second, and he did it by going to the outside from 14th to second. That's been the story for Jesse Gleason. Jesse Gleason closing right in on the back bumper of Sean Monahan off turn number four. Might even be a little bit faster at this point in the race than Monahan was. And of the Gleason boys might have the faster out of that stable. So it's Monahan out in front. Jesse Gleason runs second. Younger brother. Brett Gleason in the zero run, running in third. What advantage that Jesse Gleason has. That car is potent on the inside, and it also can make moves on the outside. And right now, he's crazy glued to the back bumper of the Sean Monahan car, almost like a hitchhiker as they go into turn one. Back into the turn they go. Gleason looks high for the moment. Falls back in line this time by. Single file among a bunch of the top ten. Meanwhile, we've got a little bit of trouble deeper in the field. The seven and Troy Waterman lost the handle. They stacked up, including Al Stone. Now they continue to spin on the back straightaway. The 46 of Carpenter is involved. The 11 car has gone around the 52. The 10 of Hank Scott is in the inside grass. This uh, 1.7 mile road course. Now, does the course go near the clubhouse? Because I might need a burger if I was going to... Uh go down there. I might uh, need a little nourishment because that sounds like a tough test. A fast 1.7 miles with left and right turns that I think would take out of a car, a lot out of a car and a driver. And if you ever wanted to see what your car was capable of, but you wanted to be responsible and not do it on the roadways, you can do it here uh, at Thompson Speedway. Uh, Tracknightamerica.com. It comes up on April 24th. It'd be great if you can join us uh, on one of those. And uh, let's see what you can do behind the wheel and your streetcar at Thompson here on that 1.7 mile road course. And Scott Cook's number one is being double hooked. And uh, you can see there is not much left to the front end of that car. It is obliterated. So what uh, turned out to be a good looking car for uh, Scott Cook has uh, turned into a casualty on lap number 12. Now a very critical restart coming up for the owner of Critical Science, Sean Monahan, going up against Captain Camera, Jesse Gleason. Monahan picks the inside row. 
if things get juggled up behind him. The field scatters, and they're four wide again here on the front straightaway. But meanwhile, the battle for the lead ranges on. Monahan across the front nose of Jesse Gleason takes the top spot. Sundin is up to third. Now Robinson fourth. Brent Gleason is shuffled back to fifth. That's a good move on the outside by Zach Robinson as he is back in the contention. Best battle on the track, Kevin Mason in the white number 37, got by Kennaway, and now he's getting a challenge on the inside from Michael Palin. Working the bottom lane of that 0-2 machine behind Mason. Meanwhile, Kennaway is off the pace, goes high and turns 1-2 and two in that green and black number 26 machine, and now he drops down to the inside off turn two. So Kennaway's start of the season. Not going the way he had planned it, but he stayed out on the racetrack, so apparently not enough to stop him from running today, but enough to uh, back him to the tail end of the field. Sean Monaghan leading by a toothpick over Jesse Gleason. Let's see where Gleason goes. He has made moves on the outside, and he has gone underneath. And a little love tap. Woody Woodpecker action to the back bumper with the Sean Monaghan car. Monaghan holding a pretty wheel, but there's Gleason right there. Five laps remaining in the limited sportsman main event. Gleason looking high in the turn. Now looking for the crossover to the inside off turn number two. Monaghan fends off the challenge for now, but Gleason back in the attack in turn three. As Jesse Gleason has a back bumper on Sean Monaghan's car into a bear hug as they blast their way off the corner. Scott Sundin in third, holding off the combination of Robinson and Brent Gleason. But things are intensifying at the front of the field, looking for an alley, Jesse Gleason. If Monaghan makes one bobble, it will be Jesse Gleason down his throat. Gleason looks high. Monaghan protects that bottom lane of the racetrack. Gleason is all over him as they come to the line with three laps remaining this time. They'll have Kenaway up ahead that they're going to have to deal with. The Monahan blocks one more time in turn one. Let's see if Gleason can find an alleyway. So far, he has been unable to come up with one. Now he wanders to the outside of the 55. Might be setting him up for a crossover move. And Kenaway is a slower traffic impeding the progress of Monahan. So we are down to the final two. It's a two-lap scoot for the loop. And Gleason almost had an alley down low. Puts the wheel to the inside. Nothing doing there, though. And Monahan is able to hang on off turn two. Into turn number three this time by. They're going to come to the white flag. Off the turn. Monahan, Gleason nearly inches apart at the start finish line. Gleason treating the back bumper of the Monahan car the way a blacksmith would. Contact again. Now he has a alley down low. Looking for a crevice underneath Monahan. And Monahan has the power in the middle of turns three and four. Final turn. Sean Monahan trying to hang on and win the icebreaker in the limited sportsman. He comes down to the line and captures victory. So Sean Monahan wins it. Jesse Gleason across the line in second. It was Robinson and Sundin battling for third and fourth, and Sundin got it. Robinson for fourth, and Brent Gleason dominant early.